Hello, my name is Keith Carnage, and welcome to my tabletop. This week, I made modular battlefield terrain, and a couple different types of scatter terrain to go with it. A couple of years back, I bought a bunch of EVA foam for cosplay crafting with my daughter. It went moderately well. Unfortunately, I have to move this month, and large boxes of rolls of craft foam uh, take up a little more space than I like, so I decided to do a project that would use up my rolls, as well as a bunch of scraps at the same time. I start by using this black chipboard, which will be the base for each plate, to roughly measure strips a little wider than one foot. It's difficult to get straight cuts on half-rolled foam that doesn't fit on your table. Next, I marked out the individual squares I'm going to cut by tracing the chipboard. When I cut them out, I'm intentionally cutting on the outside of the markings, so there will be a little bit of extra space. If I don't, I know that'll mess at least one of them up, and it will be way too small. I'm going to be cleaning up the edges with a Dremel anyway, so it shouldn't make a difference. I had enough 10mm craft foam to make 12 1 square foot plates and enough 5mm craft foam to make a couple more by doubling them up. I already had a test one I made a while ago, and then I used 4 strips of 10mm to make up one more, totaling 16. That's enough for a 4 foot by 4 foot playing space. Nice. With all of the squares of foam cut out, I used a glue gun to attach them all to the chipboard. You want to glue a little bit in from the edge if you plan on cleaning it up with a Dremel. It doesn't work so well on glue, and I can feel bits of sandpaper grip flying off and hitting me when I do. When complete, I used the chipboard as a guide to cut off some of the larger overhangs. I didn't just want to make flat plates though, I wanted to add a couple layers of foam on top to add a bit of verticality to the game. Unfortunately, I overestimated how much I had left, and I only managed to put one layer on top. The second layers all meet the edge of the plate six inches in from the corner, right in the middle, so they all line up when you put them together, mostly. The rest of the plate can and probably should be a little bit varied, or you're going to have some very straight terrain. I made five without a second layer, five with a second layer in just one corner, three with half the plate covered, and three more with all but one corner. I did some testing beforehand, and found that I liked the variations possible with this combination of pieces. I used my Dremel and a 60 grit sandpaper drum to clean up all of the edges. My Dremel was acting a little funny, being sluggish and losing power a little bit, so I decided to do as much as possible with the knife first. It can be difficult to cut thin strips off the edges of EVA foam, but carefully doing multiple passes with a sharp blade can make it a little bit easier. I had seen someone online say that they always kept their Dremel at top speed. Honestly, this thing is kind of scary and vibrates like hell. I was kind of scared to use it at 35,000 RPM, but I'm not sure how it varies its speed, and I thought that maybe it would have an easier time going full speed. Also, it should work better so it will go faster. And it didn't seem to have any more problems, but my hand felt like it was vibrating all the next day. But with the edges all cleaned up, I could put them all together on the floor and see how they looked. And as expected, I liked the variation. I wanted them to be taller though. I wanted the plates to do a little more work breaking the line of sight, but I would have to make some of the scatter terrain first to see. This is the part that will use up the majority of my scraps. My goal was to start stacking up the scraps to make little hills. I started with one big one with three little hills on it. I ended up cutting this one up into three separate hills later. I also got the idea, mid-build, to make some of them into rocky outcroppings, especially a few of the straighter pieces. I have some trees and bushes that will be used to help block line of sight, and some 2mm grass that I can add as well. I don't have a static grass applicator though, so I'm hesitant, as it can be difficult to get good looking grass without one and the art of deciding how much of what areas get grass is a new one to me, but we need to get these things built first. I used scissors to cut the scraps to more useful shapes, 
but found that just cutting a little bit and then tearing the piece can give some interesting shapes and textures. The textures will most likely be hidden by dirt though. After making the scatter terrain, I found I was definitely not happy with the height of the plates, so I decided to cut up four of the flat ones to make a third layer on all the others. EVA foam is pretty resilient. Hot glue will sometimes pull foam away with it, but you can still use the other side. I cut new corners for all of the corner pieces, then pieced together a third layer for the half and three quarter pieces. I'm definitely much happier with the height now, but kind of wish I had done it this way from the start. I found that I still had enough large pieces of scrap to make more hills and rocky outcroppings, so I did that before I started smoothing all the scatter terrain with my Dremel. For the rocky outcroppings, I wanted the layers to be visible and even added more, and also drew some vertical lines that you will see more clearly in a bit. For the grassy hills, I tried to smooth out the layers as much as possible. My Dremel seemed to be holding up alright. The couple of times where I thought I sensed it losing power, I shut it off immediately, and it was fine when I turned it back on. And then it completely died. It took two tries to get it to turn back on which was very concerning. But some googling brought me directly to their FAQ, which said there was probably fine particulates interfering with the brushes in the motor. I didn't have any compressed air, but a quick puff from my lungs and she worked fine for the rest of the project. I did dremel all the plates before finishing the scatter terrain though. When finished dremeling, I used a little bit more hot glue to fix up some of the scatter terrain and then primed them all in the plates with this plain black gesso I've had for years. I wanted the rocky outcroppings to have a texture on them, so what I'm doing here is spraying them with watered down PVA glue, then using a brush to spread baking soda all over it, which makes a decent rock texture I find. After the rocks, we get into the dirty part. This is just plain dirt I dug up from my backyard. I baked it on low for a couple hours or so to kill anything that might be living in it and sifted it in a metal strainer. I've never done this before, but I've seen other people do it online. It got very dirty. Spraying glue in the box like that worked well at first, but somehow it didn't occur to me that it might leak through, and it definitely did. So I came up with a new solution, wrap my space in plastic. I tried spraying the plates with glue, but it gets to be a lot on the fingers, so I brushed PVA onto all the plates. This ended up taking quite a bit of dirt, and I had to go dig up and sterilize more before I could finish. While I waited, I started with the next step, locking in all the loose dirt with more glue. Before glue though, you want to spray it with watered down isopropyl alcohol, IPA. This will help the glue seep into the dirt more, instead of just sitting on top. I finished blocking all the plates with the dirt, and left them to dry so I could give them a second coat of glue. I could have put more dirt on them, and probably done a better job hiding some of the ugly seams, but this was already like day 5, and I wanted it to be the last day, so I just sealed them all with IPA and glue, and did my best not to get any on the chipboard backing so it wouldn't warp. If you are doing something like this, you definitely want to buy larger spray bottles. This was very difficult on the fingers, and I had to refill my bottle after every other plate. When it came time to flock the hills with grass, I just brushed the glue on. The grass was some cheap stuff from Amazon that has been sitting in my craft box for a year. Same with the trees later. They were very cheap, like four of our Canadian moose dollars cheap. Ugly plastic with flock falling off, but from a distance they look fun. Since I don't have a static grass applicator, I just use my fingers to sprinkle it on. I felt like more of it was ending up vertically when I did so from very close, but it still only looks okay. I used a paper clip to try and fix any that were pointing downwards.
I also attached some pebbles. These were from a bag I got at Michael's. They were painted an ugly khaki yellow color, so I tried giving them a black wash, but it didn't really work out so well. I was going to get them with a bit of dry brushing at the end to see if I couldn't make them look a little bit worse, but they kind of matched the finished paint job for the rocky outcroppings, so I left them. I ended up buying the last pack of grass tufts from my local GW and used them on the rocky outcroppings, and then went and put some on the grassy hills too. Why not? To paint the rocky outcroppings, I roughly stippled them with Cassandora yellow and then stippled and dry brushed on some Dawnstone. I spilled most of my Nuln oil last video, so I made some black wash with a bottle of Chinese ink that I found in my old stuff while I was packing. It didn't tone down the yellow as much as I had hoped, but it doesn't look terrible. To finish off the grassy hills, I wanted to put these trees and bushes on them. The trees, as I mentioned earlier, I got from the Amazon, but the bushes I made myself. I found these little bits of moss or whatever falling off a tree in the front yard. This flocking is from Michael's as well, and was much less disappointing than the pebbles. To make the bushes, I just sprayed them with IPA and then watered down PVA glue and sprinkled the flock all over it, then repeated. I had wanted to do a third coat, but ran out of flock, so I gave it a sealing coat and left them to dry. The next day they are nice and stiff, and stand up well. To attach the trees and bushes, I drilled little holes for the trees to be glued into and just hot glued the bushes in place. I mostly used the bushes to block lines of sight under the trees or hide ugly tree trunks and the glue holding them in. A bunch of flocking fell off the brightest trees and I sprinkled that all over the grass before giving them all a final sealing with IPA and glue. This helped the cheap trees hold onto their foliage much better as well and despite pooling on the grass strands, it disappeared when dry. The final step is to add a bit of variation to the plates. I probably should have put on a second layer of dirt first, but that would have taken too long to dry, and I really wanted to be finished, so I skipped straight to the pebbles and tufts. I am only doing this near the ridges for a couple of reasons. It won't interfere with the placement of scatter terrain there, and also for storage. I can invert half the plates to save space, and the pebbles and tufts shouldn't get in the way like this. This will make perfect terrain for my Bloodfields armies, some forests for elves or human villages, and some rocky areas for dwarfs or orcs who live in the mountains. I think I'm going to make some little village huts to go along with it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.